plata, I means silver. Provincial History Museum, Julio Mark. What would a history museum be without a giant cannon? These battles, the uniforms that they're wearing, this is very like mid 19th century. Chile, Argentina, Peru. It just looks like I'm talking to myself like an idiot because he's known as the liberator of Chile, Argentina, and Peru. This was actually a very cool museum. Welcome back everyone to Rosario, Argentina. Today, we're headed back to Parque Independencia to see another one of the museums in the park. We saw the city museum in a free previous video and this is the Provincial History Museum, Julio Marc. So, come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you wanna help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. All right, we're inside Museo Historico Provincial here in Rosario. I already got a little explanation when we came in of what, what they have in here, but basically it's like a whole museum, the history of this whole region, Santa Fe region, right? Starting off here with like pre-Columbian, all the pre-Columbian stuff. And what's interesting, I think, is they have this map over here. So they have stuff here collected, not just from Argentina, but from also like places up in Peru and Chile and all these different places. We've seen a lot of this stuff already. Actually, we saw like uh, the Pre-Columbian History Museum in Santiago, which is actually one of my like lo lowest viewed videos. So like, I'll link it in the description. Go watch it, please. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. I'm not gonna lie. This Pre-Columbian uh, pre historical artifacts, ceramics and stuff like this, I find this so, so cool, very interesting. But I don't know. A lot of other people don't seem to want to watch this on the channel. I'm still going to keep putting it on here because I really like this stuff. I think it's very cool. But there's a section here, pre-Columbian, right? All these old, very, very cool pottery and like metalwork. And this is stuff, like I mentioned, um, the, the guy at the front just gave us a little overview of what each section is in here. So we at least know what we're looking at. Oh, here's like the, all this stuff. These textile stuff is also super, super impressive, right? They make these on a loom, old hand loom. Very cool. So there's this little section over here that's like, oh, here we go. Here's some gold. Man, we saw a crazy collection of gold in Peru, right? In Lima, the Museum of Gold of Peru and Weapons of the World. Oh, that place was incredible. That collection that they had there, unbelievable. Probably the most impressive collection that I've seen in any museum like in one place just that place was packed to the gills with really cool stuff very cool very cool Let's see what there's is over here uh, over there there's the colonial art we're gonna go in there and check it out and then beyond I think like further beyond here is like stuff historical artifacts and art and stuff from the post-colonial right like the um, confederation era the post-independence era interested to see all of that oh yeah they have some like I guess these are just just fragments here they have all the everything named here of like what it is and a whole key like a guide so you can tell what everything is that's very cool 
Yeah, sometimes at a certain site, the one we find just like little fragments, right? But I mean, that's in a major, major archaeological find. Now this place, uh, we've actually mentioned this museum, the Museo uh, Historico Provincial, in well, in our video that we made about Parque Independencia for sure, where we came and visited, but also. If you remember in the last video that we made about Casa Estevez, the museo, like the museum of uh, decorative art, that the Estevez house, Odilo and Firma Estevez, with all that super fancy furniture and like art, they were um, patrons of this museum and they organized uh, like a organization of friends of the museum and they were like, a, played a very large role in basically the foundation of this museum, which is cool. It's a cool connection to see like their collection that they had of all their furniture and art, but also to know that they like, you know, they were a big part in funding and helping to start and this museum. And that it was one of the things that uh, Firma Estevez, after Odilo passed away, she, you know, she, she was sort of a recluse. She wasn't very social after that but the friends of the museum was still something that she would meet with friends of the museum association every, uh, every month. So it was something that was very important to her. These are so cool, look at these. I don't know if you can see this, I can zoom in. But look at the, look at the colors on these, on these beads. Like how, they're very cool. These are what look like dice over here. Oh, hit the glass there. Yeah. Very cool. And here we go, map of South America from 1614. Not bad. They had it pretty well mapped out by 1614. Here's the, uh, yeah, here's the estuary here in the Rio Paraná and the Rio Leperti which now I think is called the Uruguay River some more uh, let's see little fragments oh and also like the tools that they use to make sure they get the fragments out when they're digging them up pictures of some of the sites where these are found, I guess. Very cool. Alright, let's let's say we we're not going to go in here yet. We're going to loop around. And we're going to see the colonial art section. Arte colonial. One of the good things about this museum is we got here kind of early and um, I'm pretty sure we have the entire place to ourselves. I don't think there's anybody else in here except the people who work here. I think it's me and the people who work here, like five people. Here's a map of the Americas from, when is this from? Long time ago. It's from, uh, well, it's Louis the 15th, so 1755, yeah. I mean, you can see like just for maybe a hundred and what thirty years from that other map of South America to now seventeen fifty five they they really have it mapped out like much um much more accurately, yeah, you can see the two rivers right Rio Paraná there, and also next to it Rio Uruguay and North America. Yeah, it's crazy. South America got mapped out by Europeans uh, long before before all of North America, right? And you can see on the map, right? So they've mapped out the eastern part of North America, but like all of this, this whole section of the, you know, the frontier on the other side of the Rockies, basically, because it's across the Rocky Mountains to get to it, and that's not easy to do. So all of this over here, right? Colorado, Wyoming, 
Utah, Nevada, Montana, Washington, Oregon, all of it. They they had uh, they know nothing. Idaho, nothing. They have no, nothing mapped out there in 1755. And of course, the Museo Historico Provincial, Dr. Julio Marc, who I believe was the first director of the museum, and so the museum is named after him. So here's all the colonial stuff, and like most, well, colonial art, it's all going to be religious, Catholic. That's the colonial art. Let's see, is this, who is this? Alfredo Guido. Oh, this is like from, oh, this is, oh, okay. So this is a, uh, I think this is Julio, Dr. Julio Mark, the guy who the, uh, who the museum is named after. Okay, yeah, this is the colonial silver. Now you'll remember from a lot of our previous videos. This is Rio de la Plata. That was the name of the Spanish colony, right? Vice royalty of Rio de la Plata. Because plata means silver. And they had a bunch of silver here. <laughs> and that's why the Spanish came here. And that's why they conquered it and took over. Because they wanted that sweet, sweet silver. And gold, too. There was gold. But around here, mostly silver. More of the gold was, like, further up north. Peru, Ecuador. Places like that. But man, the silver. I mean, look at this. You know? This giant thing. All made of silver. Lots of silver. More silver. Ooh. Look at this. This one is crazy. Look at the the gemstones on this like this bird. All these like inset gemstones. Oh yeah, and like this the whole thing is so intricate. And this is a uh I don't even know what this is. It's like a tea set or something. <laughs> that's that's lavish. These are crazy. Look at this inlaid wood, right? Just like... To make this, the inlaid wood, to like... Have it carved and have... I think these are like little inlaid sections of other... Like wood from another source, right? So that it's a different color. And have it all inlaid. I mean, this is like serious craftsmanship. This is incredible. The carving on this, look at it. It's incredible. Very impressive. All right, we'll continue on. This is the the post I think the post-colonial. Yeah, so this looks like this is very, you know, having been to a bunch of museums here in Argentina and also just like learning about um, the history of Argentina, you just sort of like get a feel for what era you're in, just based on like what what's in the paintings, you know? Like this guy, I don't know who this is, but he's obviously just passed away and is draped in the flag of Argentina, so you can tell that you're in the section about post-independence, right? These battles, the uniforms that they're wearing, this is very like mid 19th century. So, yeah, this is like 1844, whatever this battle was. What was this? General Juan Madriaga and Combate de Puntas de Paimar, 1844. I 
we have here. This is Mariano Moreno. Mariano Moreno. Now, I do know some names, and I recognize more names from Argentine history now than I did when I first came to Argentina, but I don't know who Mariano Moreno, I don't know who he is. There's always more to learn, right? Every country has a very long history. And there's always more, more to learn. I don't know who this is. This is a very cool painting though. This is like a, yeah, 1927, right? You can tell from the style, it's very, uh, a lot more modern. Back in the 18th century, or I mean uh, 19th century, right, the 1800s, everything was very, like, realism style, right? That basically, they just, they are simple, as trying to make, um, you know, get as close to how the person actually really looked here in the 1920s. They're taking a few more liberties, right? I think. I don't know the style. I don't know the specific style, the name. But you can see, like, in the background and just the way it's painted. Taking a little, some artistic liberties. Here. It's a giant cannon. What would a history museum be without a giant cannon? And this is a really big one, actually. This is, like, this thing's huge. Look at this. See if we can get a shot. That's big, right? It's a big boy. Here we go. Oh, this is him right here. We made a video about him, of course. We made two videos about him, but this is Jose de San Martin. El Sueño de San Martín, the dream of San Martín. So I guess this is him in his older years. And then behind the cannon, it's kind of hard to see, but I think this is also Jose de San Martín in his older years. When he was in uh, in France, you can see his like the dream that he's having, right? That's the, I believe this is the famous hug, Jose de San Martin and um, uh, Bernardo O'Higgins at the end of the Battle of Maipu, the culminating battle for the liberation of Chile, and San Martin, I believe, was was injured. But he came onto the field, and as the battle was won, he hugged Bernardo O'Higgins. It's like a famous moment. I think that's what they're depicting there. And then here you can see the three flags, right? Chile, Argentina, Peru. Because he's known as the liberator of Chile, Argentina, and Peru. Yeah, San Martin. We've done a lot. Done a lot of videos about San Martin. Two specifically about him and some more that he was sort of involved in, right? Because of his involvement with other historical figures that we made videos about. I will link all of those videos, of course, down in the description, as always. Who is this? Remedios Escalada de San Martin. Is this... Oh, I wonder if this is, uh, let's see, 1797 to, oh yeah, to 1823. So this is um, Jose de San Martin's wife, who passed away in 1823. Um, I mentioned her briefly in uh, a couple of the previous videos. She was from uh, Mendoza province, or Cujo province at the time, but like Mendoza, where we visited in the summer. These, I think, are more, let's see. Well, this is more religious art. I can't tell if this is, 
colonial era or independence era. Um, well, it looks like this is. 1560 to 1648. Perhaps this stuff back here is also colonial era. This is one of the things I've realized when you look at um, when you're looking at art and uh, artifacts and things like that from in South America in general. If it's if it's religious, right? It's usually colonial era. If it's like Catholic religious, it's usually colonial era. If it's if it's um, you know like those pictures of San Martin or you know, strong, strong looking gentlemen draped in the flag of the nation and stuff like that. That's usually like independence era. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not very good with uh, art. I don't know much about different styles. Um, historical art I'm better with, of course, because I'm a history nerd. And so I've seen a lot of like historical art, you know, portraits of historical figures and stuff like that. There's some really cool furniture in here. This, of course, is reminding me of, like, all that super cool furniture that we saw in the uh, Estevez Museum in our last video. Like, these crazy, like, chests all inlaid with, I don't even know, Mother of Pearl. Very cool. Very cool, all this stuff. Now there's a whole other section, there is one other section over to the, uh, like off of the um, independent section that we were in where the San Martin paintings and the giant cannon, where all those were. There's another section, we'll go check that out. But I wanna check these things out first. This is interesting, what is this? This is, I'm not gonna lie, a little creepy. What am I looking at? These are quite strange. Oh, I wonder, oh, you know what? Okay, this makes sense because look, whenever you see these kinds of like wooden sculptures, religious ones, they're always dressed and they have like, you know, a cloak or a cape and they're completely dressed. I guess this is what the, the models, the sculptures look like underneath. Because if you're never going to see the legs, right, or the joints, why would you articulate those, right? You would just make it like that. You'd make it, you know, like this. And then you'd dress it up. That makes sense. That's actually interesting to see. I've never actually seen what the, uh, the models look like underneath the clothes. Some more religious artifacts back here and religious art and uh oh look at this this giant altar right here and the carvings the carvings on these old like altars from the i don't know 18th 17th century whenever this is from when this is from Oh, well, is this, this is from 1946. Oh, no, that's it was acquired in 1946. It's from the 18th century, so yeah, from the 1700s. Man, yeah, the carvings are just so, like, they're so intricate. I'll zoom in a little bit, and you can just see. And we see these things all over the place, right? People had them in their, rich people had them in their houses. There was one of these in, uh, who, what was the guy's name? Ra Rafael de Sobramante, his house in Córdoba. Interesting figure, Rafael de Sobramante. Very interesting historical figure. Check out that video about that guy, man. He's this guy who's, if you haven't seen that video, you don't know who he is. He's basically, <laughs> was, was like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. He was in charge of, of Argentina. He was, he was, he was the, the like governor of the Vice Royalty de la Plata, I believe. 
basically what happened was the British invaded in the early 1800s. They invaded Buenos Aires, and he just sort of like retreated from Buenos Aires to Cordoba, where he had a house. And we went and visited his house, but in in Buenos Aires, he's like um, he's vilified. In Buenos Aires, they hate the guy. But in Cordoba, they love him. There's streets named after him, and you can go visit his house. But, uh, yeah, in, in Buenos Aires, no. <laughs> they don't like him there because in Buenos Aires, his the story is basically that he just, like, grabbed all the silver and ran off to Cordoba and left the people there, like, to defend against the British by themselves. It's a very interesting figure. Check that video out. Hola, ¿qué tal? Here we are. Oh, here we go. The campaigns of San Martin and Bolivar. So this we've talked about in many, many previous videos. But this San Martin started his campaign of independence here at Buenos Aires, liberated different places around Argentina then over to Mendoza, Cuyo province, across the Andes, liberated Chile, Battle of Maipu, 1818, the culminating battle, then raised a navy, sailed up to Lima, Well, in the meantime, Simón Bolívar in the north, liberating Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, eventually San Martín sails up to Guayaquil in Ecuador and meets with uh, Bolivar and they basically decide the fate the fate of all of the Spanish Americas San Martin retires goes off to Europe Bolivar comes down with Antonio Jose de Sucre they finish off the royalists in, uh, in Peru and then that's it all of Spanish America is liberated and then begins what is basically a period, a long period of civil wars in all around here. This is battle of, I'm not sure what. Oh, San Lorenzo. Batalla de San Lorenzo. I think right here. Oh, they do have a pretty large collection here. Actually, there's more rooms back there. Here we have the saber of Juan Gregorio de las Heras. Old sword. Another old sword over here. Who's this? Oh, this is a facsimile. Okay, so this is a fake uh, recreation of Jose de San Martin's sword. His saber, cavalry saber. Here's some of the... An old musket. And a... A bugle. And a musket. This is what I was mentioning, the invasion of the English when uh, Rafael de Sobramante uh, took the silver and ran and went to uh, Cordoba. This is the invasion. All right, let's see, let's keep moving on here. I've got a portrait. There he is, General Don Jose de San Martin. Jose de San Martin. He was a pretty dapper guy. I've seen so many. I've seen so many paintings and statues of this guy being in South America. He's just he's everywhere. And Simon Bolivar. Yeah, these two are the San Martin and Simon Bolivar. They're like the the two, the two most important figures in the independence. Now, Simon Bolivar, I haven't seen as much about him. I haven't done as many videos about him. Um, 
mainly because he's from Venezuela. He's very famous in Venezuela. A lot of the stuff that you can see, his, his, his tomb is in Venezuela. Um, and unfortunately, as a U.S. citizen, it is just very problematic. It's very hard for me to go to Venezuela because the relationship, uh, the relations between um, Venezuela and the United States are not very good right now. Um, so I don't know that I'll be going to Venezuela anytime soon. I would really love to, to be honest. I've mentioned this in some previous videos. I, I've met lots of Venezuelans who are living outside of Venezuela. I've met them in every city that I've visited so far, and they've all been very, very nice. And I, like, I, I don't know. I would, I would love to visit, but I don't think it's going to be in the cards, at least not, uh, not anytime soon, especially given what just happened in the uh, most recent election in Venezuela. If you don't know what happened, you could look it up, but I don't know. It's probably not, probably not going to be in the cards. What do we have back here? Okay, before we venture into there, I want to take a look real quick over here because I saw, yeah, right here, saw a portrait of a guy on a horse, and I want to know who he is. General Martin Santa Coloma, 1800 to 1852. And let's see, who is this? I don't know, you know, this looks honestly a little like Bernardo O'Higgins. Um, I don't know if it is. And there's no, there's no, uh, oh, well, let's see here. Uh, no, yeah, see, this is just telling me what's inside the case. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it is, though. I don't think that's Bernardo O'Higgins. He's, he's a, he's a Chilean. It looks like him, though. He had these big sideburns. He was a little, a little bit stout. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, Plaza de Maggio. Plaza de Maggio, Iglesia Catedral. This is the, uh, uh, yeah, this is the cathedral, right? So, the plaza that's right next to the flag monument, Plaza 25 de Mayo, uh, there's that cathedral, and I think that's it. I think this is a painting of that in 1840, right? Interesting. Here we have, what do we have? Another portrait of, I don't know who. Does it say? Nope, it just says number 37. Okay, I don't know who this is. This is, oh, is this, uh, oh, okay, I know. This is, um, what's his name? Ma yeah, Juan Manuel, Manuel de Rosas. Juan Manuel de Rosas. This guy was on one side of the Civil War. I think he was on the losing side, actually. But um, the, the, the Civil War post, uh, yeah, yeah, here. 1835 to 1852, so like post-independence, um, pre-Confederation. There's his couch, I guess with, I don't <laughs> with a foam recreation of him. No, oh, that's him. All right. If they made a movie about Juan Manuel de Rosas, who would they get to play him? I don't know. Looks kind of like Victor Garber. You guys know Victor Garber?
All right. Yeah, that's the room with the swords and the guns. So I think we've seen everything here. Let's go back real quick. Head back in here, because there was this one room back here. I just want to see real quick, see what it is. It was all dark, but there might be something, something back here. Well, it looks like just some, some more modern art. Okay. We've definitely been like pretty much the only people here, the only person here. Like we, uh, there's been nobody else. There was one guy I think who was someone who didn't work here, and everybody else is people who work here. But I'm okay with that honestly because I like having the whole place to myself when I'm gonna walk around filming and talking to y'all. Of course, I mean, it just looks like I'm talking to myself like an idiot. So these are all of Manuel Belgrano, the famous Manuel Belgrano, who we have mentioned in a few videos. This one is by far the creepiest. I don't understand why his horses and he have multiple eyes and multiple ears. That one's really terrifying. Why is that like that? Okay, anyway. Manuel Belgrano. Interesting sculpture here made from rebar. That's actually really cool. I love repurposed art. You know? Take some rebar, repurpose it, make art out of it. Very cool. Here... This is, uh, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I wonder if this is supposed to be like Parque Independencia. It kind of looks like it with the uh, lake and the bridge going across. I don't know if it is. Yeah, maybe it is. Uh, yeah, it is. It is because here's the Rose Garden. There's the statue, the um, statue of the mothers, right? The Rose Garden. Okay. So this is Parque Independencia right here. Very cool. Yeah, there's even someone sleeping on a bench. Which I have seen in Parque Independencia, so there you go. Alright. I think we have seen what we came to see here at the museum. This was actually a very cool museum. And it's cool to come here and see it uh, after learning, you know, about... Well, one, coming to see Parque Independencia, right? And we saw the museum from the outside. But then learning about the history of uh, Odilo and Firma Estevez and how they supported the foundation of this museum and how after Odilo Estevez died, that Firma Estevez, one of the only social engagements that she still continued during her you know, 20 years of grief after losing her husband was to meet every month with the friends of the museum, like the Museum Association. That's very cool. So, I think from right here, we're going to call it for this video. Right here in front of the portrait of the dreams, the uh, Sueño de San Martín, the dream of San Martín. I think that's going to be it. This is a very cool museum. I'm not going to lie. If you come here and you're visiting uh, Rosario and you're going to visit uh, Parque Independencia, definitely come to this museum. One, it's free, uh, which is great. There's a donation, you know, uh, box at the front so you can donate a few thousand pesos if you want. Um, and it's very cool. I like that it's very well organized. I like that they have stuff from all different eras. It gives you a very good um, sort of a timeline through art and through artifacts of the history of Santa Fe province here, but also just of Argentina in general. Very cool. Definitely recommend. That's going to be it, though, for this video. There's going to be... Well, actually, I think this is actually going to be one of the last videos that we make here in Rosario. We are going to be moving on soon. We're going to stay in Argentina, but we're going to be moving on to a different city. But regardless, there's going to be plenty more stuff coming from here in Argentina. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you in the next one.